What is up guys, Son of course, welcome to another VPL Battle Calls Week 10, this time against the course Astronaut Kai, Eric, or the Bristol Bidoofs. And um, yeah, sort of a previous week here where I barely had any time to record, sadly. I finally got the time to do just so, and I'm glad to share my thoughts, of course, the team analysis. And uh, as you can see on the small, small screen, I'm feeling a bit terrible because I didn't make it bigger. I can realize that now. It doesn't look that impressive. Anyway, there you see Eric's team, of course. The remaining of Godchomp, Mega Sabla, Yoroshi, Hellis, Crobat, Porga 2, Aromatis, Typlosion, Sork, Aurorus, Lovezeal, and Gogoat. So, yeah, this is the man who carries fl actually Gogoat and Sork. That's, uh, that's terrifying. <laughs> but with that said, um, I built a team that I think could take on his team fairly well. Uh, it's not ideal by any chance. It's something special with seeing a team with Mega Sableye. Um, so Mega Sableye is super, super frustrating for me to deal with. I only have one proper response to that Pokemon, that is my Mega Daenchi. Outside of that, my draft basically can't keep up with it. And. Uh, I think if he knows that, he's gonna bring Yurashi of anything. Because Yurashi is also a mod that I do believe can come in and out against me uh, without really any effort. And of course, the Scar set is um, a set that I do believe wins uh, a lot of matchup, which kind of forcing me to use Jellicent. Uh, so, having that said, we're gonna go over, of course, a team that I've been prepping for. The first Pokemon is Kobeleon, a special defensive variant with uh, max speed. Uh, 96 in uh, a attack, so not a whole lot, and then 112 in special defense, and the rest is put on uh, its HP. Basically, this mod is able to, um, or it has Iron Head, close combat, and um, then we have Substitute and Sword Stats. The whole idea with Cobalion for this specific game is to uh, be able to set up Substitutes against Porygon 2 and Mega Save Life, both mods being quite famously known for being somewhat passive. Uh, Mega Sableye can have the right damage output. If it's offensive, then he could break my sub, but I feel that's highly unlikely. And of course, if Porygon 2 is Shadow Ball Ice Beam, which I cannot predict for this matchup, then um, one thing that kind of scares me there are um, download ability over tracing. So we'll have to see which one he preps for, but both will be super annoying. But I said that Cobalion should be able to kick him off. Plus, probably the only mod that I do believe are a bit threatening here are uh, uh, Garchomp against it. Because Garchomp do, of course, or could outspeed it if it's a Scarf variant. While it would probably have been forced to go for the likes of Earthquake. Um, which is something to worth keeping in mind. But that's something that I have to uh, avoid if I can. Having that said, if it's a Scarf variant and locks into the Earthquake then Hydreigon comes in. Hydreigon is the next, of course, Pokemon I'm going to talk about. Hydreigon is a rather simple set this time. Mainly here we have dual stat with both Dragon Pulse and Dark Pulse, and then we have Taunt and Toxic. Basically, the idea here is to... Uh, and of course, Modest, so... Uh, we actually have Max Speed, which is tying with a Jolly... Jolly Sock, sadly. Uh, but I really need the damage output, and I kind of believe if it has a Scarf Sock, then it's going to face offend me off anyway and reveal that by actually switching that in. But uh, yeah, outside of that, uh, Hydreigon is not extremely important, depending on which Pokemon it brings. Hiroshi can learn Moonblast, which is something I'm aware of. But outside of that, we should be able to do well. We have a Kessie Berry here to be able to take an outrage from Garchomp if he decides to be a life or variant or anything like that, that we can't fend that off. Um, outside of that, um, like I said, straightforward, toxic, mainly there for the Porygon 2, and uh, should do fairly well here, uh, depending on which Pokemon he decides to bring. And that is going to be followed up later on with, of course, Jellicent on his own. Jellicent here with Colberberry, Willow, Scald, Shadow Ball, I'm trying to figure this out, and uh, Will-O-Wisp. Did I say that? Willow, Recover, yeah, whatever. Uh, basically the same set, defensively variant to be able to take on possibly Float Seal, which is an annoying mod for me to be dealing with. Also can take on Type Lotion, if it is a physical variant with the likes of Wild Charge. So this one is mainly here to be able to take on possibly Garchomp, possibly Urashi, and possibly Crobat. It, it's not ideal Pokemon brand in the sense of the word, but it has a purpose with its, its switch-ins, and of course, uh, being able to spread the Willowisp is going to be somewhat important depending on which Pokemon he brings. 
and I do believe Colbert Berry is enough to keep him in check with against the Sableye. Possibly go for a Skull Burn, but it's it's a risky play, but Colbert Berry makes sense for most of the time. And of course, with of course Crobat possibly could carry Pursuit and um, Soul Carry Knockoff. So there, there are reasons for having Colbert Berry for this specific matchup, and I do believe Jelly Sand, if anything, should do fairly well due to, of course, this matchup alone. The next one I decided to pick here was, of course, Tornadoes, and Tornadoes is definitely a Pokemon that stands out to be either the most important Pokemon of the match or actually completely useless. Uh, we have this set this time with U-Turn Knockoff, Hurricane, and Taunt. Taunt is mainly there for Sableye switching, unless, of course, a Magic Bounce, which would be unfortunate, but I'm really not affected by Taunt. I can't taunt while I'm taunted, I guess that's 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 a thing. But outside of that, it's mainly there for Porygon to not to be able to recover his setup against me. And of course, possibly Crowback going for possible... Well, Deep I was going to say, but I have no rocks, it doesn't matter. I'm, I don't know why I said that. Anyway, uh, we have enough speed here to outspeed Float Seal, which is mainly the only one that matters. We can't outspeed Crowback naturally. And um, the main idea for it is to be, of course... Uh, able to get a possible scar from Yurashi, which could carry Ice Punch, uh, which is something I have to be aware about, but mainly uh, is able to pilot around kind of freely and get the ideal matchup, and of course with the Yenshi in the back, uh, Tornado should be able to fend off Mega Sableye in such a way that the Yenshi can come in against it, and also it's... I don't have, of course, Assault as I have Leftovers, so it's a pretty tough Pokemon to kill, and with knockoff, you can actually shut up, or shut up, shut down um, Porygon 2 uh, very effectively. But that's about it. It's a super, super simple set. And uh, it can only do so many things. But I think that Tornadoes will be an effective Pokemon for this specific matchup. But it all depends on which Pokemon it brings. But it's mainly here for Yarashi. That's the first Pokemon that I'm probably going to be trying to fend off. And then we have Dianchi. And Dianchi here fully speed, I do believe, because it has to outspeed Heal List, which is a 109 base, so how about that? Uh, so if it carries Heal List, then at least outspeed it. We have Diamond Storm to be able to 1 kill Crobat, Moonblast to 1 to kill, of course, Mega Sableye, and Gotchomp, uh, which I think is the only thing that matters. I do believe Aurora's, uh, or I mean, Sork falls there too. And then we have uh, Earth Power for Yurashi. It's not a 1 in KO, but if we, we ensure that that Yurashi is not, um, what do you call it, a Scarf set, then we should be able to, from 70% to take it out. Uh, so the energy is important as far as it goes for Mega Sableye. Mega Sableye, like I said, is a big issue for me if uh, I can't fit it off properly. And I can assure you that I cannot... Outside of the Pokemon I'm using, the Yenji is the only Pokemon here to be able to want to KO it and force it out. The other ones can do damage on it, but trust me, the Yenji is the, the girl for the job, if anything. And it, she's not super important um, outside of that. If Mega Sableye is gone, then the Yenji is, well, gonna be completely honest, a pretty much waste of this matchup. But Mega Yenji makes sense, and uh, hopefully she gets some screens on this time. She did fell kind of bad last battle. I kind of want to redeem myself after that fall into a floor just of other things. And the last Pokemon is actually Delphox, and uh, it's a bit strange this time. I was debating whether or not I should use Delphox or Scullipede, but the thing is with Scullipede is while it do well against Eric, I also know that Eric knows how to play against that Pokemon, and Delphox has a few unique abilities which kind of makes it interesting to uh, utilize in this kind of matchup, which is something I'm going to try to use instead. Delphox is actually an anti-leaf this matchup, and uh, the main idea here is to have, of course, the likes of Psyshock, uh, Fire Blast, and Hidden Power Ice together with Sugar Berry, and then we're packing, of course, Magician and Trick. So the idea here is that I feel it's very likely that he will lead off with uh, Godshot would, of course, be able to Earthquake me or go for Stealth Rocks. I could utilize in the power of Ice. If it goes for an Earthquake or showcasing that it's anyway Scuff, then I will not only will I survive the Earthquake, I will steal his possible Scarf and uh, due to me utilizing Shukaberry, which should force him out to Paragon 2 and me going for a Trick. Uh, basically steal his Evalite and then I must Scarf Delphox, which could be enough to outspeed Crobat. 
Now, worst case scenario is he leads up with the Crobat, and then I'm kind of screwed. Uh, then I have to switch out with Yellow Sand turn 1. But outside of that, I do believe Del Fox could be used well. Uh, it's definitely a gamble, and uh, it's a risking gamble at that. But I do believe Del Fox has a good damage output naturally. And uh, it has a respectable speed here, be able to have speed gosh up is going to be important. Fire Blast is closer to its KO uh, from an uninvolved, of course, Sableye. And oh, yeah, if he leads off with Sableye, he can't go for a Prankster Willow. I do believe want to try to save that, so that's something I'm also going to keep in mind. Because I do believe Del Fox is annoying for him to deal with, because he's, he definitely won't expect him. Or I don't think he will expect it, is what I'm trying to say. So, with that said, that's the main, main idea with this team I'm bringing. If I had to make a guess on which Pokemon he's going to bring, I'm definitely saying his three Oyamans, Garchomp, Sableye, and Jirashi makes sense. He has to have Crobat in case for rocks, and just mainly, Crobat has a very, very good speed here. And then it's definitely Porygon 2, and I do believe the last one is either going to be Float Seal or Sock. Uh, so those are the 6 or 7 Pokemon I do believe coming. Um, Sock makes sense, I do believe Float Seal is better, but it has ways of dealing with the energy outside of, the, of course, the Float Seal. But Float Seal is actually fairly dangerous. I'm not really going to take that fact away. It's actually the speed tier and decent attack stat makes it a bit, a bit tricky to actually utilize it well. Plus it gets low kick of all the things, which basically kills Macabellia, which is awful. Uh, but yeah, outside of that, I do believe this is one the one team I will be facing. And the next time you hear me recording will be the post narrated battle, uh, which should happen, well, not you guys are aware of it, but soon. <laughs> anyway, transition! So, alright, and here of course comes the team preview. Now, uh, before anything else, make sure to check out Eric's channel, of course, which is gonna be linked down below. And if you look at Eric's team, you do realize that. He didn't bring either Yurashi or Garchomp, which is good. Uh, a bit, probably did a bit of over prep against them, but at the same time, it's not as potent of a team, and hopefully, I can do something about that. So we are seeing, of course, Porygon 2. That was given. Crobat. That was a given Pokemon. Float Seal, very likely. Mega Sableye, definitely a Pokemon that was gonna come. But then we get Sork, which was something I was expecting, but at the same time. Not, it was between Float Seal and Sock, not necessarily both at the same time. And then we have Aurorus. I have no idea what to do about Aurorus. I definitely didn't think we would bring it. I have nothing designed in mind with that Pokemon due to it. And uh, yeah, basically I have no idea what to do. Uh, I'm basically with this team in mind, I basically realized that both Tornadus and Hydreigon are not only are they wasted, but they're close to useless for this specific matchup due to, well, they were designed against tougher pokes. And they not necessarily keep track of, of course, the Pokemon I'm facing. But Del Fox has to do what it was supposed to. Uh, Mega the she has to take on Sableye and definitely kill it. And basically, I gotta hope that both Jelly Sand and Kabelion are enough to fend off this team properly. But anything can happen. I know Eric is an extremely strong player. And um, not gonna lie, going into this game. I knew I was going to have a tough time. So, with all this said, let's go. So, right, from the get-go though, obviously, starting with Delphox, Box, hoping for the best, as he starts off with, of course, Mega Zubilai. Now, here's the thing, like I said previously on my um, team preview, I had a feeling he would switch out, he would not try to lose his prankster, and of course, risking, of course, the likes of having an extra will at his Prozoshi. So, having that said, I'm just going for Fire Blast. Fire Blast will not do anything, but luckily for me, I will at least try to go for a trick here and stealing that Eviolite, which I do believe is the most important play I have for this whole game, and luckily we did pull it off as he goes actually for Thunder Wave, and that kind of sucks. I was really hoping for Toxic, but Thunder Wave, yeah, at least that means Yellow Sang can come into this mod and probably maneuver it. So as he goes for, of course, the likes of the Recover, I will try to go for a Psy Shock. I do pull it off, and uh, it does definitely more than Fire Blast. And knowing that, I'm just actually going to go for Fire Blast again, hoping that it switches into Sableye, which it does, and basically hope that I'm not paralyzed as we do connect. And this was supposed to want to kill him, but um, he's defensive. 
He's definitely defensive, so I feel free staying in. I can't take a possible knockoff if he decides to go for it. As I'm just going to keep hoping I'm not fully paralyzed as he goes for pranks to recover, which is not a bad play. Um, if I'm fully paralyzed, that is, because Fire Blast actually, as Mega Sable has evolved, is close to a 50% hit. And um, after actually, of course, uh, his Mega Evolving is actually slower than my paralyzed Delphox. So, Sableye Falls would basically do enough in this matchup, which is great. Like, I wasn't really deny it. I'm super happy I came out on top here, but Flow Seal is going to come in here. And Risky, of course, gets going over Waterfall. I'm have to bring Hydreigon as he goes for Bulk Up. And I was like, oh no. that that, that That's not okay. Uh, luckily, though, I was predicting him to have Low Kick. He does not. He has Brick Break. And that does way more than those under 50% I was aiming for. As the Dorkles will fail to kill him. Uh, should definitely have Drake of this matchup. I do believe that was a big mistake. Since Float Seal actually is now able to KO, of course, my Hydreigon. Best stated, Hydreigon was for Garchomp Balloon and Sableye, and when not, they not being active, there's no point of you actually have Hydreigon left. I do believe it was worth risking it. As now at least can bring Tornadus freely, and the Tornadus can't be KO by the plus one Ice Fang or Ice Punch. So I'm really here to go for a knockoff as PP comes in, will of course be in the Porygon. And he's gonna, of course, get my Regenerator, which I just basically felt like, of course, of course, he pulls that play off. And uh, there is really not a whole lot of good this situation. Basically, I could either go for a U-turn or try to get some damage off. And uh, I decided to go for a Taunt, thinking he would try to T-Wave me or recover. None of that happens. As now I can really go for Brave Bird, I decided to go for a knockoff. Uh, in case it was a Bandit variant, I do realize a Bandit variant could might as well kill me as he decides he is actually Adam and Scarfed which was something I was not foreseeing and now I'm basically like okay uh, now he's free, free to do whatever he likes and Braver definitely will kill me so I'm better of course for Delphox hoping that Recoil will kill him uh, because Delphox proved his purpose right it shouldn't necessarily do anything else as he goes for Braver and like I said I am banking this thing to die of, um, of the recall alone as uh, <sighs> he survives. I I'm just gonna say it. He does not fall. It is a slitter of health, but a slitter of health with just super, super annoying as I'm forced to bring Necromedusa. And uh, I do believe here that I went for a uh, Shadow Ball. Uh, I do believe, uh, no, I went for Recover thinking he would go for Braver. I did go for Recover. Trying to actually remember the game. I basically had it like four hours ago. It's not that bad. Uh, anyway, so like I said, I go for recover. As uh, I said earlier, I realized that I am completely, completely walled by Porygon too. So if he has Shadow Ball, then he wins this matchup, which is terrifying. Uh, but he goes for T Wave uh, over, um, over of course the likes of um, Shadow Ball, and I felt that was quite alright. But I will be fully paralyzed and not score the Willow. And I really wanted the Willow, I really had no reason switching out, knowing that he could go for a dual para and get one more of my mods fully paralyzed would not be an ideal situation. But he actually decides to switch this out, which is awesome, because I did not like that lockdown situation whatsoever. Uh, I will break free, of course, of the um, paralyzation, but sadly it is in the wrong turn, and Float Seal, of course, can uh, soak that Willow Wisp with a Water Whale, as he goes for Crunch here, and he shouldn't do a whole lot, I am full defensive, and of course Cobra Berry, and we eat that up, we eat that out effectively, and Shadow Ball of course will KO Float Seal, which is great, but then again he can just bring P2 again, uh, which is something I feel like, that's, this is gonna be the agony of my day, but no, he goes for Steve Austin, being of course Aurorus, and um, I'm just basically a hard squish to Gabalion, feeling that Freeze Try is his best play for the situation. And I did not want to go for a Scalding like that to activate his weakness, possible weakness policy. As he goes for Rock Polish, and I was like, oh no, oh no. Gabalion, can you take a Nerf Power? Can you really take a Nerf Power? Yes. Yes, we can. <laughs> I'm actually, we was a 6% chance of me being one KO there, so I am somewhat lucky here. As we do KO, of course, Steve Austin. But the unlucky part here is that 
anything with Kubelion I did prep for or plan for is now due to, to of course, me not having, well, clearly any HP left. As San Jose King is gonna Kim, come, Kim, which of course be in the sock, and I'm gonna risk it, hoping that it's not scarfed, as of course the knockoff will showcase that that motherfucker is scarfed, basically, and I lose Kubelion there. I was really trying to break it sturdy. But I can at least, knowing that it's scarfed, I can freely go for the Mega Evolution with, of course, Mega Denshi, so let it happen. So feeling that it most likely going to switch out, I decided to go for Diamond Storm. Basically, I wanted actually to get the defense raise from, of course, uh, the Diamond Storm to be able to take a close combat from a Scarfed Sok. Uh, but he doesn't actually switch that in, he goes directly for Porygon 2, which is okay. He gets a Magic Bounce, of course, as I have to switch out to Jelly Scent. I can't bring in Tornadoes. I need to have Tornadoes somewhat healthy, depending on if he decides to lock himself to close combat as he goes for Hidden Power Steel. And yes, I won't deny it, that's awesome. I'm definitely a memeable if anything. As I'm just going for Willow here, I knew I had to go for Willow. His best play is to go to Sok, as I'm actually break through, of course, the Paralyzation, gets the Willow on Sok. Not only do I break the Sturdy, but I'm now nerfing the Sok. And this, my friends, are basically GG. Um, he could have stayed in actually and um, that would have been fine but I actually got to know later that he has Hidden Power Steel and Try Attack and was not able to hurt Jellicent whatsoever which is basically the reason he had to switch out had he had Shadow Ball and Ice Beam like I foreseen then that um, that Porygon 2 would have been a much much different ball game uh, but no, I, oh wait, he had Call Mind, right? Call Mind, Thunder Wave, Recover and Hidden Power, okay. Uh, so that, that was a very, very tough situation. I was definitely, like I said, uh, expecting the likes of Recover, Toxic, Thunder Wave, um, Ice Beam, and uh, Shadow Ball. But yeah, having that said, it did turn out to be quite the game. And I do believe Jalfox did the majority of the work. But at the same time, I do believe also Eric had a few nice plays. But the end game was basically a bit too tough and I had, you know, the, the, clearly the offensive mods I needed left to kind of maneuver around him. So I will do a bit of a favor here. I do believe I fought, um, not on, when I say fought, I mean that he deserved to get the Daenji kill, which is, you know, a bit of a thing he always have done to me and I try, I'm not going to take that away from him. He always gets the Daenji kill, so there's the bar steel, it KOs, of course, <laughs> Mega Daenji. And I'm just gonna wrap it up with Jelly Sin. So, Eric, thank you so much for that game. Um, sorry about rambling off there, but clearly here, this was a game where I really thought he would try to offensively maneuver me with Garchomp and Yarashi. Not seeing them was super, super lucky for me, but at the same time, Aurora's almost turned the game around for him. Uh, because there was no way in hell I was going to actually outspeed Aurora's after a plus, a plus two. Which is terrifying thinking about it because that just showcased how good of a player Eric really is and you know definitely trying something different to maneuver me offensively and it was so close to working that had he turned the game around with that Aurora's I would have not only been completely fine I do believe that would have been most most deserved of him winning that game if anything but yeah we do come on on top here and it's a pretty darn close 2-0 if you ask me so GG Eric and for everybody else thank you so much for of course watching and of course don't forget to check out of course eric's channel as i don't think i have any afterthoughts i probably pretty much feel i've said everything i needed to so thank you so much for you guys and i see you in the next video take care